a book from the 1930s, last printed in the 60s. It's out of print now. Written by a friend of a friend of a more famous writer. Each page I pass comes undone from the binding and crumbles like moth wings between my fingers. The pieces fall like dried leaves to the floor, but I go on because the words are bright bleak, true. The lines are coated pictures drawn from a man's ribs, who smoked endlessly, skipped dinner with friends, to write this, and died early so he could live free. Full of himself, but full, never knowing if anyone would care, and often not caring himself. Alone with the gods, careless and carefree. The women he writes about were promised immortality. They were preserved for nearly a century, which is better than the makeup, the mirrors, embalming or faded photos. Alive and vibrant, hungry and lustful, they live on for a hundred years, even though now they are skeletons, softer than this paper. Out from the center, pressed between the pages, falls a small blue clover. Not a romantic flower, almost a joke, a time capsule, a memento without a known meaning like a seed from a distant reader before the book drifted to me. This book was once new, an investment for some man with a cigar, fresh and exciting for some kid, a scandal for some church matron. It journeyed through cafes, libraries, schools, bargain bins, storage lockers sat for a lifetime on red on a shelf, then given away, almost thrown in the trash, until I found it in a box that said, for free. A man's whole life is entombed in this book. I search his name on a screen where no one seems to care. As it crumbles between my hands, I think, Perhaps I am the last one to read this. His memory ends with me, and mine with you. All you can say is hello. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere.
is everywhere. Everywhere is all the time. All the time is now. Strangely queer and smashing lumber inside my slumber, enveloping, cloaking, embracing my worst nightmare. O oh, wispy hum in the night sky, I look to the west, the stars wither and die. O oh, wispy hum in the night sky, I look to the west, the stars wither and die. In pieces, they fall, my heart's tiny space. I look to the east, the terror etched in my face. Many moons she is passing, passing through, stopping before me, waving like golden brown wheat blowing inside, glowing lighted gates. When doors open, they creak. When doors shut, they slam. Oh, mother, my sky, I become you. Oh, mother, my sky, I become you. I am the flower you pick. I am the grass that grows. I am the songbird that sings at the top of his throat at 3.56 a.m. while it is nearly 2 a.m. where you are. But nobody knows when time stops, when the clock keeps ticking. When the clock stops ticking, when the second hand is silently still, when the sun meets the meadow and your shadow covers the landscape like a checkered picnic blanket atop the hill, conscious becomes tail. I am on the side of history that cradles you dearly in my brain. Acutely aware of words I emit, I know the laughter is in the state of it. Waiting for you to cross the street, holding my hand you never let go. I am the poet you raised, rightfully so. I have worn the shoes you are now standing in. I am so lost, yet so found in translation. Thank you. 
I remember the glow Oily rainbows down the drain I remember my skin Melting off Exposing my brain Remember the awakening The promise of a new age As if enlightenment was on its way. The day it came, the day it raged, the day of acid rain. rain. The day it came, the day it raged, the day of acid acid rain. After the drops hit my pupils, things would never be the same. Giving birth to a black butterfly, Mother Earth dilates. I have a yearning. I feel strange. My mind is burning with regret of a wasted age. The day it came, the day it raged, the day of acid rain. rain. The day it came, the day it raged, the day of acid acid rain. Remember the greenhouse effect? Vegetables in rows on a plane. Global warming was the phrase. Then it was called climate change. Remember when we were able, but we acted like Cain? It was time to act, but everyone just prayed. The day it came, the day it raged, the day of acid acid rain. The day it came, the day it raged, the day of acid acid rain. If love does not fulfill its purpose, then fear will have its day. Exhale a cloud of locust history erased humanity's sensitivity brought down by its pain comes a faded memory a stain the day it came the day it raged the day of acid rain The day it came, the day it raged, the day of acid rain, rain, rain. The day of acid rain. Faces drifting by 
I see friends shake hands, say how do you do? They're insane. I love you. Babies cry, watch them grow, they'll learn much more than I'll ever know, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world, yeah, I think to myself. What a wonderful world I think to myself Chapter 17 Here today, gone tomorrow, like a puff of smoke With a sand castle, licked by waves until smooth Another day, at the edge of time, at the shore Helplessly watching the fleeting horizons shuffle All dust, now you see it, now you don't Blink my friend never complained about life, never talked about his family, never romanticized the future. He seemed completely in the present. He never talked about starting a band, just pulled out his guitar and started playing. Better than the rest of us with bigger mouths. He was so cool, he was almost cold. Then his solemn, chiseled face would suddenly burst into a manic Cheshire Cat smile, eyes on blinking and features on fire. Like myself, he felt most at home around his friends by watching them, prodding them to hatch their inner demons. I was always a writer, taking notes before I knew why, but Anthony was literally Recording with a camcorder, logging hours of semi-illegal activity. Anthony was hiding comfortably behind the camera, the soundtrack full of his maniacal laughter like some kind of anarchist laugh track. Grainy night scenes and video static. Anthony, I, and the boys in a cornfield swigging brandy and taking turns passing a taser around to feel the sobering rush of electricity between the sips of Soma. Screams and laughter as the police paraphernalia lit our senses like mini electric chairs or shock therapy, flashing visions beyond the lightning. Anthony loved the drive. When a long night was over, for him it was just the beginning. He loved to drive his friends home at top speed. Anthony was laying in wait. You might be sick, tired, and lost, but you were in for a ride that would awake the dead. He would gun the shifter forward. One friend, car surfing on the roof, one clutching the hood, howling into the windshield, a stolen fire extinguisher blasting out the passenger side window, leaving a trail of fog in our wake. Like a black-clad James Dean, Anthony would 
plow the road open with his masculine chin wedging up the wounds of a less innocent age wide-eyed and laughing we cruised aimlessly rearranging every Christmas display for 50 miles with a baseball bat on an inflatable snowman hanging out the car window like a happy hostage the car stereo blasting the misfits sheep on drugs Nine Inch Nails, the New York Dolls, Ministry, or Iggy Pop. Each time we saw each other, we always tried to cheat death in some way. Maybe this kept us from looking each other in the eye because of how much it would reflect ourselves. Instead, we binged, purged, sped away, car surfed, and jumped off cliffs. Like the time we were steeped in opium and went over the chain link fence at Summerfest in Milwaukee. We were inside for free to see bands we didn't like, eyeballing the crowd like schools of fish in an aquarium of sweat. I got him high for the first time. The German Heritage Parade was in full swing in our little town. The distant sound of march music and accordions echoed as Anthony and I and the rest of our scraggly gang of metalheads puffed a bowl under the rusty railroad bridge under the reeds. Oil runoff from the factories spiraled in rainbows under the china blue sky. After high school, when I did coke for the first time, sitting in his bare kitchen under the hum of a green fridge, he cut two lines, one small, one thick. I snorted the fat one. Mr. West, he said, that one was mine. Oh, whoops. So I leaned over and snorted the other one. You asshole. Neither of us got heavy into cocaine in the end. The shock of the drug being present was more of a high than the actual effects of the drug itself. After the novelty wore off, it was basically a waste of money. More innocent flashes of memory. In school, when late for class, he would run without moving his arms. Anthony made comic strips during study hall. One character was an uncouth streaker called Mr. Butt Cheeks, who would pop up during historical scenes like a nudist time traveler making Abraham Lincoln do a double take and stroke his beard. Another was The Adventures of Vince, based on our friend depicted as a hairy skeleton in a straitjacket. Anthony related a dream to me which was animated in his sleeping head. Mr. Vince was singing opera as he was carried to a sausage factory by an angry mob. The singing continued even after Vince was ground into sausage. Now an army of little sausages was singing but in a higher pitch than before. After high school, he rented a house behind Harder's bar in the courthouse, which quickly became a party house. Every time someone opened the door, Anthony's dog, Sweet Pea, would dash outside, and Anthony, often shirtless, had to tear ass after the pup across the neighborhood. Years wore on, dreams flattened out, a decade clumped together. Every time I was back in Wisconsin, I'd see who was still in town. Sometimes Anthony was, sometimes he wasn't. Not much to talk about. Shitty jobs, bad relationships, and problems too boring to even bitch about. Problems we swore we would never have. 
Usually Anthony wouldn't speak unless you asked him a question. But I do remember Anthony telling me in his almost monotone, baritone. Right now, I just want a job where I can sit down. I don't care what it is. I'm just sick of coming home with my muscles aching. I just want to sit down. I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Wes. I was always Mr. Wes. He was formal with me, like he was looking down a microscope at some strange specimen. There was one night that I really felt like a rock star. I ended up going home with this girl. We are getting friendly and her roommate came home. I thought the mood was dashed, but no. The roommate joins in. We're all buck ass across the bed. I had bleached hair down to my ass at the time. Then they started taking out their makeup kits and putting lipstick on me. Smearing mascara all over my forehead. In the morning I woke up stressed out. I had to get home and get ready for work. Outside I see I'm just a few blocks away from my house. The streets are full of people going to church and giving me funny looks. I get home and look in the mirror. My face was a maze of red and black marks. He started laughing and sputtering uncontrollably. Ten years evaporate, but every time I bus into town, Anthony is there to pick me up. Often we wouldn't say a word as the metal blared across the prairie from Milwaukee or Madison or Janesville to the stick in the mud town where we grew up. Then we were in our thirties. I get a missed call. I get a voicemail while I'm at work that Anthony is dead. Bad news like this, you always remember who told you like some kind of sick chain letter. I call back and learn that his death was intentional. I found out who still has not been told about it. You know by instinct who it is your duty to tell the next person as if tracing the thread through time of who originally introduced who into this circle of friends. The old crew is brought together these days only by funerals. But this time I'm too far away and broke to fly from Texas into the heartland. Stuck in limbo alone, I watch his life flash before my eyes. Maybe I didn't really know him. Without a word, without a note, without a bitch or a moan, Anthony connected a hose to the exhaust pipe of his hot rod, ran it to the driver's side window in a closed garage, turned down some tunes and went to sleep. This was no cry for help. This was no mistake. He didn't make mistakes. He always did whatever he wanted. He did it with precision. He must have been tired. Did the manic light go out? Did the cool blue penal eyes freeze over? Spirit on fire exploded in supernova, early unforeseen, fuel exhausted, exhaust, engines gunned, cylinders spinning, the ultimate surging, 
hot rod snuffed out, stewing in some poison in some fluorescent garage at midnight. Now you see it, now you don't. Wink. Never a nicer guy. Unselfish. Unpretentious. And unapologetic. Now you see it, now you don't. Wink. Now the laughter is just an echo. The warm pulse in cool veins has gone still. Cold, ashen bone, underground, mummified. A toothless grin, a puff of smoke. A surprise you should have seen coming, blink. Now you see it, now you don't. I wish I could have said something, but I talk too much already. Anthony knew silence. Anthony is silence. Distorted power cords, distorted signals across the room, rubber facial expressions across space, static fuzz, fire, radiation in the void. It was there all along. Now you see it, now you don't. Dust. Here today, gone in a flash, a blink, taser fire, electric snakes, a wink, a spark, a smirk. Now the laughter is just an echo.